Good morning everybody, I'm Steve and welcome to Green Side Up. Um, I'm doing some work in the big polytunnel today, some potting on and things like that. But I've come down this morning, we've had a light frost and I thought I'd just show you the beds outside. It does show you that winter is still here, although a lot of people are sowing seeds. People are eager to get going. Just hold back, your, your plants will still grow. There is no rush at all. So I'll just have a quick walk around outside and show you. So here's the top of my no dig raised beds. And you can clearly see the frost on it. The sun's beating down, it's a lovely morning here amongst the wallflowers, the frost. And then we go over to my little dip tank where I water my plants. You know, so it is still cold. So I'm getting on with some uh, potting on this morning. And I'll get all these plants that I brought down potted on in the next few days really. I'll just do a couple of, couple of trays a day. This is unsieved compost. And what I've got here is cutting celery. Now, your normal celery, you grow it up and you get nice big long stalks for eating with salad. And you try and blanch the stems if you can as well. This is just a cutting celery. This is, I use this. Um, don't particularly like raw celery, but I do like the taste of celery cooked into something like, so it will go into my stocks, sauces, soups, casseroles, that sort of thing. And it's part of a traditional, what the French call a mirepoix, which is a, a chopped veg, typically carrot, onion, celery, leek. And it's the base for many a thing in catering terms. Now, because these were sown into sieve compost, they're coming apart nice and easy. And just chuck them in a hole and they will grow. I'll pot about a dozen on and I only really want to grow about six eventually. So, I mean, I do treat my seedlings and plants very rough. I don't like messing around. So it, many a gardener will probably notice, God, he's being rough with them. And it's true, I am terrible with plants, but it works for me, so. And so as long as they've got a bit of green on the top, and a bit of root underneath, that's all they'll need. And just pot them on. Doesn't work with all plants, but it works with most of what I grow. And generally, if I haven't had something grow, it's because I have been too rough and too heavy handed with it. So that's that little tray sorted out now. They'll grow on and we'll have cutting celery. I'll get on and uh, pot on something else now, some flowers, I think. So next up are these Cosmos. Now, I love Cosmos, they're a brilliant plant. They'll grow anywhere up to four or five foot tall by about three foot wide. And they'll be smothered in flowers from sort of, uh, well, June onwards, really, we will start getting flowers on them. And flowers go about this sort of distance. So they're great for little posies or little tiny vases on windowsills. Fantastic for that. You don't get a massive stem length, only sort of about this long, but they're great plants. And I say I love them because they're a great filler. If you've got a hole in a border somewhere, put a Cosmos in, it'll soon fill it up for you and look wonderful. Now, because I like them so much, every year I buy a couple of varieties and it's left me, I had all these sticks here, were all past Cosmos and every year I buy more. So I decided I sowed the whole lot this year that I had stored. And you can see I've got three, I think maybe four, no. Yeah, three varieties that have come. So I now know which seed packets to get rid of because they're not viable and I'll get shut of them. And again, I've got far too many plants here, but it matters not because I'll give them away. And again, because they're in sieve compost, Seedlings come out nice and easy for potting on. You can deep plant them if you want. 
I'm not too bothered. They're deep enough in these module trays for me. So we'll pot these on and they may need potting on again before they go out, we'll see. But the thing is with Cosmos, and one of the reasons I like them so much, not just because of the flowers, but also because they will attract so many bees into your garden. And you want, in a vegetable garden, you want bees in there to pollinate things so they grow. So the more reason you can give a bee to be in your garden, the better the results you're going to get with pollination. You can get by without them, but for the sake of a few seeds, why wouldn't you? And you'll see these in the summer. These will all look bloody fabulous. And Now, I generally grow four or five Cosmos at home. Probably about the same here. Maybe a few more here. So you can see I've got tons of plants. So I'll either plant them or put them up for somebody else to, to use, pass them on. So that's that one and that's Dazzler. This one at the end is my favourite. Nobody's getting any of that except for me. That's purity. It's a pure white. And it really does brighten your garden up when that's in flower. But I've only got four or five seedlings. So does anybody else out there, do you grow Cosmos? If you don't, why don't you? <laughs> Go and get a packet of seed and but try them. Easy to grow, easy to pot on and look after. So there we go, that's Cosmos Dazzler, I'm um, sorry, Purity, and the Cosmos Dazzler done. I'll do a tray of this one in the middle as well um, and I think that will do me and that one is Picketty. So that's it, Cosmos, dead easy, loads of flowers, big face, um, space filler, can't go wrong with that. <laughs> right, so what we've got here is these are the cutting celery I've just potted on and the rest of these are uh, the cosmos that's the tray that's left over the rest of the seedlings i've just given to another gardener so that's all i'll need there for those these labels i'll take home find the packets and i will chuck them they're obviously no good and this here is a trial i've never tried this stuff before this is coconut koya and the bloke on the plot next to me here just got himself a couple of blocks big big blocks to try so he offered it to me, he said, do you want to try a bit? I said, yeah. So I planted some Cosmos in four cells there and I might try and find a suitable seed to grow in those other four cells. And it's just a trial, so we'll see. We'll see how that goes through the season. So it's it's uh, something I've never uh, used before, so it'd be interesting to see how that goes. Right, we'll get on with something else. Okay, we're at the back of the big tunnel here. This is something worth keeping your eye on. Is this stuff, it's algae. Okay, and that will stop the transmission of light to your plants and hamper their growing. Uh, you can buy proprietary cleaners. I mean, I know some people will use, uh, for instance, a Jay's fluid, or you can get a more environmentally friendly one if you want. I think it's called Algon. Um, 
you don't need to buy a cleaner for it, it's just a soft brush. And then just wet it. And then you come back 10 minutes later after wetting it, and it will just literally, look at I me, mean, it's, it's brushing off there already. It wants to come off. <coughs> Excuse me. So yeah, just wet it and give it a scrub. And I do this at all times through the year, really, just to keep it down. Sometimes you can't do the complete tunnel because there'll be plants or something in the way, like this load of rubbish I've left here. But again, it's just a bucket of water. And when you've got a free minute, just go and give it a scrub. It soon comes off. And those hard to reach places, just use a hand brush. And the thing is with, like my greenhouse at home, where they have the channels at the bottom of the, of the glazing panes, it can really build up in there and become a thick moss. Not so much a problem for the greenhouse, but it can harbour pests. And that's one of the reasons you want to get it off, apart from the fact that you want a better light transmission in your growing space. So there you go. Hopefully you can see that that's just coming off. And all that is, is just water. And it'll soon come off. Just need to go home and find a soft brush so I can get into those edges. So there we go, there's my top tip. I'll finish that off. <laughs> so there we go. No chemicals, just water and a little bit of elbow grease. Gentle elbow grease, you don't want to obviously rip your plastic. But um, I've done all that with that big brush and in comparison to the other side see the difference it's made so don't forget to wash it outside as well obviously but there you go <laughs> so there we go a few more jobs done um, plants potted on I've done a lot today actually a lot of alternate jobs have been sweeping paths and cleaning up as well but that's it for today look after yourselves everyone stay safe I'll see you very very soon take care now bye bye <laughs>